here so that we can actually study, so that we can actually research, so that we can actually investigate these scriptures and take a stand. Hallelujah. I receive the same mind that's in Christ Jesus. I receive it. I receive it right now. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Jesus name. I like how the apostle uh, John says, and now we are the sons of God. We are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. I certainly greet all of you. Hallelujah. The Lord is my savior. Hallelujah. My redeemer, my healer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I definitely thank God for every one of us being here together on tonight. Thank all of you, everybody that's on Zoom. Lule, man, it's good to see you, bro. Good to see you, Lule, man. Can't wait to see you again in person and stuff, man. So God bless every one of you, Lady J, baby. Thank you for just being where you are and who you are to me in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all, we've been dealing with hunters for a while right now, and um, we just have to go just a little bit further dealing with hunters. Everybody say, I believe I'm a hunter. I believe, I believe, I'm, a hunter. I believe I'm a hunter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is just so powerful to me. If you have your word, why don't you go to the book of Isaiah? Isaiah, the 52nd chapter i want to talk about hunters a little bit more tonight but this time this is a personal word for the hunter because it's great when we have people that hunt for us and come to when i say hunt this time i'm talking about within the kingdom Amen. people that show up when you feel like you're lost or you feel like you're struggling it's such a blessing to have somebody to call you and say, man, where you at? How you doing? What's going on with you? Man, as a matter of fact, before we get off the phone, let's pray. You know, when you experience the fruit of someone who is a hunter, it's something about when hunters gather together. When we begin to know and understand that no matter where we are, something can pop off. It's almost like we get to a place where we understand that God can shift and give us an assignment at a moment's notice while we sitting in Burger King, while we sitting in Wendy's, that God can give us a word. Somebody can walk in a building and all of a sudden you realize that something you were supposed to do had to happen at the moment that the person shows up. It's something that happens on the inside of us. And in order for us to be alert, and in order for us to be able to be activated, if you will, everybody say, Lord, activate me. Lord, activate me. Hallelujah. So we can be deployed. What's got to happen, y'all, is hunters got to be healed. Hunters have to be healed. It's so powerful to know how God delivers us. How he saves us. How he transforms our minds and how he lets us know that if any two or three of us come together and touch and agree concerning anything, he lets us know that our healing and our deliverance can come based on assistance from others. That's why the Bible talks about not being unequally yoked. That's talking about if you're equally yoked, that means that it's like you have eyes behind your head. It's like you can see danger from different vantage points because you're not alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But then there are times when you do feel alone. And I need you to understand that the same word that somebody can speak to you that can bring deliverance is the same word you can speak over your own self. Hallelujah. You can actually deliver yourself. I need us to really understand this. Because God deals with us the same way fathers deal with sons, the same way parents deal with their children. It's almost like a, a parent telling the child, wait a minute, take your belt all the way loose, make sure you use the potty right. Mom, I gotta go, and the baby could be jumping on both feet, and the mom said, slow down and take your own belt loose. You... You do what you know need to be done. I've been doing it for you for a while, but then you have to step back and say, now you do it. 
So God brings us to a place, y'all, where he expects us to be able to say we can actually operate in that which he has set before us as a pattern. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Amen. Watch this, y'all. Look at Isaiah chapter 52. Hallelujah. And look at verse number one. Isaiah 52 and verse number one. Hallelujah. Scripture says in order for us to be healed, in order for us to be delivered, it's as if the Lord comes to his children and he begins to talk to all of them at the same time, but it's like he's talking to them individually at the same time. And the Lord is saying, awake, wake up, hallelujah, get up, look what he says, Put on strength the same way you put your coat on, the same way you put your pants on. He said, put strength on. Everybody say, I receive strength right now. I receive strength, I receive right, now. strength right now. He said, put strength on, O Zion, O kingdom of priests. Look what he says. Put on your beautiful garments. Hallelujah. O Jerusalem, the holy city. We make up a holy city, y'all. Hallelujah. Look what he says. For henceforth, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. So what he's saying right here, he's saying that there's been people that's been coming into your life. And because of us not being healed a lot of times, we find ourselves entertaining people in an ignorant way, not realizing that if they're dealing with something that's unclean, something that's contrary to the will of God, when they come in, he's, when he says they come into you, he's literally talking about somebody that can come into your life. And if they're carrying something that's ungodly, guess who else get it? Oh you do. He says, so there got to come a time where we begin to wise up. There got to come a time where we begin to understand what it means to put on the whole armor. Praise the Lord. Are you dressed for battle? Oh, Let's talk. Don't, don't, don't put your guard down just because it's somebody who you know that know how to pray. Don't y'all hmm. know that somebody could be walking in the spirit all day to day and then fall and fail miserably tomorrow? Yeah. It's not good enough to say because I know they've been like this yesterday. Wait a minute. Just because you knew what they sounded like yesterday, your ears still got to be fine tuned to know what kind of words coming out of their mouth the next day. Praise the Lord. Because if the words that come out of your mouth, if the words that proceed from the inside of you, from your heart, it's going to reveal under whose influence are you operating at. Because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. If you if you caught up into some type of trap, your mouth is going to tell on you. It has to come out. It's like pressure coming from a pipe. That's why James said that if a man can control his tongue, he can control his whole body. Doesn't matter. We have to continue to grow. So that's why he says, wake up. It's almost like a military sergeant walking into the barracks and saying all of a sudden, I know you're used to getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I know you're used to because that's the drill time. But now I need to wake you up at 3. I need you to know at a time that's not even forecasted that I may have something I require of you. And I need you to have your mind right even if all of a sudden it happens at a time you wasn't ready for it. Wake up! Hallelujah. This is a good time to put on strength. It's a good time to put on beautiful garments. Hallelujah. Look what he says in verse number two. Y'all, what happens when you got something that's of use? Something that you love. And if you're not using it for a long time, what starts happening to it, y'all? If you got something, it starts getting old. What you say? It gets dusty. It start getting decayed again. Even if you have a car, it's amazing. A car can sit up. You know it doesn't have a flat. But if it sit and not be used for a long time, oh, right. the air goes out of the tires. Oh, right. The air, the, the tires begin to dry rot even faster. Mm -hmm. That's right. Not because it's being abused, mm -hmm. but because it's not being used. Hallelujah. <clears throat> 
What you have on the inside of you, you have to exercise what you got. When do you take off? There's no such thing as taking off from your faith. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm on the clock right now. I'm on the clock right now. I'm on the clock right now. Praise the Lord. So guess what, y'all? When it's time to go to bed tonight, hallelujah, you let put your head on the pillow, you're still on the clock. <laughs> There's no such thing. Because how many of y'all been attacked before even in your dreams? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. If I ever have a dream and I find myself giving into a temptation, I wake up mad. Like, like why did not, why did not know who I am? Because sometimes, even in a dream, you don't act the way you know when you're awake. But I want to be the same in a dream state. I want to have even more authority because sometimes, and I'm just being honest, sometimes in a dream, you you kind of know you're in a dream sometimes. And yeah. you try to take advantage of situations and opportunities and people. Yeah. Because you know it's a dream. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I don't want to give way not even to a dream because what happens in a dream is like a gateway to iniquity. Right. Yeah. Whoa. You're not safe just because you're not doing it in the physical. Oh my God. Right. It's about what's taking place on the inside. Hallelujah. So what that mean when he said wake up, now he says in verse number two, Shake yourself from the dust. Hallelujah. Almost like your arms and your shoulders and started getting a little dusty. Why? Because you haven't been moving. Whoa. Haven't been using, haven't been exercising what you know. And before you realize this, you got to look at yourself and see, y'all remember they had a little dance back in the day where they just was dusting their little shoulders off? Y'all, it, it comes to a place where we have to understand that spiritually we have to check ourselves. The Bible says, be examined to know if you are in the faith. Yes, sir. Some people could take five minutes and go on vacation. And they're not in the faith no more for five minutes. Cussing like I don't know what, doing whatever they want to do. And then they say, oh, well, let me go ahead and get back. Well, I'm, but I'm still on the clock. <laughs> and what happens is we want to be surrounded by individuals that help remind us who we are. And hold us accountable. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Because you already know every fleeting moment can lead to some type of satisfaction, even if it's just emotional satisfaction. Yes, sir. But I gotta be reminded who I am. Wait a minute, what kind of mind do I have? I just got through saying I got the mind of Christ. Amen. So shake yourself from the dust. And look what he says. After you shake yourself. He says, get up. Hallelujah. And then after you get up, then he says, now sit down. <laughs> you all see that? <laughs> Shake yourself from the dust, arise, and sit down. Like in other words, when you sit down this time, get ready for instruction. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amen. Like don't try to get into the instruction while you're still dirty. Get yourself together. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dust yourself off. Get up, get your blood pumping. Now I'm alert. Sit down. Yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. What you have for me to do? He says, sit down. And he says, oh, Jerusalem, loose yourself. Hallelujah. Oh, Sometimes we be looking for somebody to come in our lives and speak a word of deliverance. What about if it don't happen? <laughs> what if they don't come? I said right here, loose yourself. Do you know how to regard when your own mind is out of line? Do you know how to recognize that all of a sudden you're feeling vulnerable? You're feeling, you're feeling easily accessible? God says, what you going to do about it? Loose yourself from the bands off of your neck. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, I choose to loose myself right now. I choose to loose myself, I to loose myself, right, myself now. right now. Uh, look, look what he says. He says, in order for you to have to loose yourself, at that moment, you're going into bondage. He said, loose yourself, oh captive daughter of Zion. Loose yourself. Like, now I got to talk to you like, do you remember what it was like to be free? What is it like to be free? Amen. The scripture says, stand fast in the liberty that Christ has made us free. Yes, sir. 
when you're free, y'all, believe it or not, and it, we, we got to talk about this type of stuff, because when you're free, there is something that we have unlimited access to, and it's called, hallelujah, the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Everybody say, when I'm free. When I'm free. When I'm free. Somebody tell me, what's the fruit of the Spirit? What's one? Love. 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 So, so guess what? So if I'm free, I'm free to love. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know why? Because I'm standing fast in the liberty that Christ has set me free. So if I got the mind of Christ, what am I able to do? I'm able to love. All right. Get like that. What, what's another thing that you get for what y'all want? Somebody say peace, right? Guess what, y'all? The peace of God. Guess what? If I'm operating in the flesh and if I got some bands on my neck, I, I don't have peace. Yes, but if I got the peace of God because I'm free, y'all, you got to choose. Sometimes you might not want to feel like being free because your emotions want to be in the flesh. Wow. Y'all, you got to be able to check yourself. That's why the word says, wake up, shake yourself. Yeah. Get the dust off of you. Begin to speak the word over your own life. Because, y'all, we can't go into a pity party. We can't get to a point. Well, the reason why I did this was because you used to call me every week and pray with me. But because you ain't called and pray with me this time, I saw that girl and I had to go hook up with her. Because you ain't called me. You're looking for a reason. That's right. Uh -huh. But the bottom line is, sometimes the reason that they broke their consistency is to prove your discipline. Do you remember who you are? I'm a hunter. I'm a hunter. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. And guess what? Your hunters got to be healed. Yes, sir. So that means I got to wake up. I got to put my strength on. Y'all, sometimes you find yourself getting weak. Could it be because you left the jacket of strength on the chair? Hallelujah. God said you walked out the house. You forgot strength. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. And in the power of his might. <laughs> Yes, sir. So I need to put on strength. Praise the Lord. Amen. Shake yourself. Get up, sit down. Now as you sit down, I need you to analyze yourself. Analyze yourself. How, how much love have you been having? How much joy have you been having? How much peace are you walking in? How much gentleness and kindness do you have? Well, if you start analyzing it and start realizing there's certain things I don't have, he says, start taking the bands off your neck. Because you're in captivity. Because if God gives us freedom, I'm free because I have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Pastor, you, you're a musical hunter, man. I've never heard you as free today. As I've heard you before in the past. I always knew you had a gift. But I've never heard you as free today. And I, as I was studying and looking over this. There was times where God told his people. What to do. Like to regain to regain authority. To take dominion. But then he was talking about singing. Like he coupled. Taking dominion. With being able to have a song in your spirit. So sometimes. How do you know if you have another assignment? It's the same way like somebody giving you some 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 clips and some ammo because you're about to go to war and all of a sudden you start getting new songs in your spirit. It's preparing you because the type of hunter you are. The Bible said, the scripture says there's people, there's times in the scriptures where they needed music in order for them to accomplish a purpose. Ask David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask David. David was gifted to write and to make music. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He says, so shake yourself. Take the bands off of your own neck. Everybody say, I'm taking the bands off my own neck. I'm taking the bands off my own neck. I'm taking the chains off my own neck. I'm taking them all. Y'all, y'all, gentleness, y'all, we need that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, because we got certain things that, that the world says 
That's too nice, man. You don't need that. Don't be like that. That's what the world says. Right. Yes, sir. Now, but gentleness, oh, you need that. Amen. Kindness, Amen. oh, we need that. Amen. We need the scripture says, it's by loving kindness that I've even drawn you unto myself. Amen. So if he had to be showing loving and kindness, lovingness and kindness to us, what makes us think we're not supposed to be producing it? I have, everybody say it again, I have the mind of Christ. I have, I have the mind, mind of Christ. 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 I have Hallelujah. the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. He says, verse number three, for thus says the Lord, you have sold yourselves. Look at what the scripture says. He sold yourselves for nothing like like, you ain't even let somebody pay you to go into bondage. You went into bondage for nothing. <clears throat> so look what he said. So because you went into bondage without money, he says, I'm going to deliver you without money. Oh, my God. Oh, see that? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm going to deliver you without money. Praise the Lord. He said, guess what? He said, I remember. Look what he said in verse number four. Minister G, read that verse four, man. But thus says the Lord God, my people went down at the first into Egypt to sojourn there. And many years later, Sinet, uh, the Assyrian, yeah, the Assyrian. <laughs> oppressed him for nothing. But now <laughs> I delivered you from both Egypt and Assyria, what then can prevent me from delivering you from Babylon? Oh my God, y'all see this? Amen. God said just to get you saved. You didn't realize, but there was a lot of fighting that already took place. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Just to get you saved. So whatever it is you fighting right now, God said, why are you acting like I'm new to this? Right. Why are you acting like this word of God is not a word of war? Why are you acting like you ain't? Why are you acting like I'm not about it? I can speak a word to deliver you today the same way I did ten years ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Deja, won't you read that next verse, verse number five? Verse number five. And now what do I have here, declares the Lord, for my people have been taken away for nothing, oh. and those who rule them mock, declares the Lord. And all day my name is constantly blessing. Now don't y'all know that this is taking place right now, right here in Houston, right here in Stafford, Texas, right here in Missouri City, right there in Victoria, right there in New Orleans. It's happening everywhere. He said, therefore, what I have to do, said the Lord, my people are being taken every day for nothing. For nothing. Nothing happens and for whatever reason you get caught up in a trap. And you thought that just because you didn't have to pay for the blood, you thought that it just was a blessing. You thought because you didn't have to pay for the alcohol and the drinks, it was just somebody like you so much and you just had to take it. You thought just because she was flirting with you and she's looking at you and, and passing up all your friends and coming to you, you thought that meant that maybe she's the one. Well, maybe you the one that she said, you're my assignment. Yes, sir. Wow. And now she's coming to try to make you fall. Y'all, yes, wake up and put on strength. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, now therefore, what have I to hear? What have I hear? My people are being taken away for nothing. Look what he says. And they that rule over them make them howl. Hallelujah. Make them grieved, said the Lord. And he said, because you all dusty, because you all weak, my name is now being blasphemed. As if I'm not real. As if you're not a hunter. The enemy is trying to drive you into a cave, trying to put you on a hill, trying to put you on a mountain so that you can be believing and trusting in something that's not God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. Verse number six, Sister Judea, baby. Therefore, my people shall know my name. 
Therefore, in that day, they shall know that it is I who speak. Here I am. Y'all, look, the Lord is like, wait a minute, hold up. It's time to set the record straight. Mm -hmm. I, I got some children around here that it's like they forgot who they You got bastards. Yeah. You know, your, your, your biological parents might have left, but he said, but the one who formed you is still here. God says it's time for me to speak. Sometimes when God speaks, he interrupts a period of bondage in your life. Sometimes when God speaks, it's almost as if your mindset begin to change. Like I was, I was on my way doing so much foolishness, and all of a sudden it came to me, don't do that. Like what was it on the inside of me? It's because God interrupted because the Lord is like, wait a minute, I'm speaking right now. Hallelujah. Like you said in that song, he is king. Hallelujah. He is my God. If God speaks a word. Who can go against them? Say, behold, it is I. Oh, look, where the hunters at? Where are the hunters? Verse number seven. Watch this. Brother Malule, can you unmute and read that verse number seven for me, man? Praise the Lord. Yes. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Oh, my God. He we bring good news of good. Who publishes salvation? Oh my God. Who says to Zion, your God reigns? <laughs> Y'all see this? Praise the Lord. Take that microphone right there, man, and read that same one, well, verse number seven. Hallelujah. Just read it loud at this time. Hallelujah. Verse number seven. How beautiful the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Hallelujah. Who proclaim peace. Who bring good tidings. Who proclaim salvation. Who said to Zion, your God reigns. Your God reigns. He's talking about, he's talking about what is the benefit of you waking up. What's the benefit of you dusting yourself off? What do you sound like when you put on strength for clothes? What do you sound like when your mindset is like salvation? What, is, what do you look like when your breastplate is righteousness? And your loins is girded with truth. He says, wait a minute. How beautiful upon the mountains. God said, I've called you to scale some mountains. Mm -hmm. To go deliver some people that's on mountains. He says, you know what? They got some people that's caught up in so much foolishness on these mountains. He said, but hold up. Here's somebody that's coming up the side of the mountain. It looks like a hunter. Hold up. Let me look down at his feet. Oh, yeah. He's on assignment. Hallelujah. How do you know if he's on assignment? His feet are beautiful. Because his feet are going where I've ordered him, where I've ordained him to go. Because if his feet are going where he's supposed to go, and his mouth is a word of power. And his mouth is a word of war. That's why he said they bring good tidings. That's talking about the gospel. Hallelujah. That publishes peace. When he said publishes peace, he said he's not talking about that. He said it's possible for you to have peace or talk about peace like this. Oh man, peace is something that could happen to somebody every now and then. <laughs> man, look at that peace go down the street. Look at that peace go. <laughs> he said, when you publish peace, when you show up. The peace of God would not move from that place. And somebody would say, while you was talking to me, something came over me. What's that? That's the peace of God that published it in a person's heart. It's been established. That they can't even rebuke. They can't even, it can't go against what you're saying. Because peace has been published. Everybody say, publish the peace of God in me. Publish the peace, publish the peace of God, of God in me. That publish the peace. Look what he says. That brings good tidings of good. What's good, man? You could be free. I don't care how long you've been dealing with that. Y'all remember Peter? He was dealing with all his sin. And he was like, God, the Lord, depart from me. The Lord is like, Peter, Peter. You've been catching fish, but from now on. You're going to catch men. It's a good tidings of good that publish uh -oh, salvation. As said unto Zion, 
Stand up and declare it. Your God reigns like he's talking to people that's not even acting as if they've been activated because they're asleep. They got so much dust on him. And even in that state, God said, I got some hunters that's going to stand up and say, your God reigns. He's not dead. He's still alive. Put on strength. You forgot your garments. You forgot your assignment. And now when they hear it, Claude, it caused them to stand up at attention. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's, let's go a little bit further with this real quick, y'all, so we can get ready to wrap up. Watch this. Now, uh, let's go to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs 6. Gifano, you with me, man? Can you go to Proverbs 6? Yes, just that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me know when you're there. Proverbs 6. Okay. You got it? Drop down to yeah. verse number 5. Hallelujah. Proverbs 6. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter. Oh my like God. a bird from the snare of the flower. Y'all see this? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Minister G, read that same one, verse number 5. Deliver yourself as a room or gazelle from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Hallelujah. Y'all, did he say wait for somebody to come help you? No, sir. Did he say start screaming out, yelling for help? No, sir. What did he say do? Deliver yourself. Save yourself. Deliver yourself. yourself. How many times we find ourselves looking at something on social media? And when you have the power to get off that page, guess what you just did? Delivered yourself. Oh, boy. Deliver yourself. Praise God. He said, deliver yourself. Look what he says. Just like a big old deer that got caught by a hunter. And that hunter just knew I got some food. And something happened with that deer. He's like, he's saying, let that deer kick and use his his bucks to, 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 to just fight his way free. God said, you didn't saw enough things that were supposed to get caught, get set free. God said, I need you to think about that because I need you to do it now. I told y'all, just because we hunters, it don't mean that we're not being hunted. We still being hunted every day. But God says, deliver yourself. Hallelujah. Free yourself. I know sometimes the enemy try to catch you with these thoughts and catch you with these emotions. Deliver yourself. The Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As a rope from the hand of a hunter and as a bird that's been caught by a bird catcher. Free yourself. Stop looking at it like I got to have this friend. I got to have somebody I can call. Let me get a hold of pastor. Let me get a hold of Lady J. Let me call somebody. And y'all, and, and trust me, I'm not saying that to be facetious because God knows if my spiritual father who passed away would still be alive, I'd still be calling him. I call my God connections. But I understand that I'm not supposed to rely solely on my God connections because my God lives. Amen. And he's on the inside of me. I might not feel like I have enough knowledge about everything, Sister Judea, but I know enough about what's necessary to not only keep myself free, but now I can actually bring some freedom to you also. Amen. God said, trust in what I gave you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Deliver yourself as a rogue from the hand of a hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Now let's close out. Let's go to the last verse. Let's, last one. Let's go to the book of Zechariah. Y'all gonna like this one, boy. Zechariah. Z E C H. Hallelujah. For my young hunters. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Chapter 2? Yep. Yes, sir. Everybody say, I'm delivering myself. I'm delivering I'm myself. Delivering myself. Yeah. Every single time we come to get together in this word, y'all, it's like we're taking bands off of our neck. We're taking chains off of our feet. We're fighting to maintain our freedom. 
Because every time you leave, you better believe that the enemy is trying to slip it on you like it's a nice necklace. That's not a necklace. It's a chain for bondage. It's a yoke. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 2. Brother Mwamba, once you read that verse number 5, read it loud, man. Zechariah chapter 2, verse number 5. Hallelujah. For I say... For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. Oh, my God. See, y'all, see when we, everybody say, I'm waking up right now. I'm waking up right everybody now. Everybody's shaking, right shaking, right shaking the dust off of myself. Shaking the dust off of me right now. See, you got to walk. You got to walk as if you know you're surrounded by a wall of fire. Y'all see that? When he says, I will be a wall of fire about Around her, he's talking about all of us. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because he don't want you to just think, oh, well, if he said David, he's just talking about just David, but I guess I'm doomed. Right. <laughs> he said, no, it's around all of you. That's why he said, wake up, get up, shake yourself off, dust the, get the dust off of you. He said, I will be a wall of fire around her. And will be the glory, be the glory in the midst of her. Hallelujah. This is so powerful, y'all, because our, our authority is so powerful that if we choose to walk in sin, even God honors it. Mm. Did y'all get that? It's if I choose to be disobedient, if I choose to be in bondage to my flesh, the Lord says, you in my image. You do what you want to do. Wow. I'm not going to stop you. Yo, this is some serious stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. This is why he tells us, let this, look, I know I can't make you. Let this mind be in you. Oh, receive it. Everybody say, I received the mind of Christ. I received the, the mind, of Christ. mind of Christ. He says, I'll be a wall of fire around you and will be the glory in the midst of her. Look what he says, y'all, in verse number six. Verse number six, Sister Deja, why don't you read that verse number six for me? Verse number six. Come, come, flee from the land of the north, declares the Lord, for I have scattered you to the four winds of heaven, declares the Lord. Now, now who does that sound like he's talking about? He's talking about his people that's been scattered, scattered all over. He said, look, come from the land of the north. Come from under that influence. Come from under that bondage. Look at verse number seven. Sister Judea, baby, read verse number seven. Uh, escape to Zion, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. Praise the Lord. Lule, what's yours say? Verse number seven. Uh, man says seven. Come, Zion, escape. You who do well with the daughter of Babylon. Babylon. Hallelujah. Which would that amplify, say, Minister G? Oh, escape to Zion. You who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. Praise the Lord. What's yours, say, Minister T? Read it. Say it loud, man. Deliver thyself, O Zion. Hmm. That dwellest with the daughters of Babylon. Now listen, he's saying, deliver yourself, O Zion. And don't forget who's all around you. Mm -hmm. Deliver yourself, O Zion. Wake up, Zion. Everybody say, wake up, Zion. Wake, wake, up, Zion. wake up, Zion. Deliver yourself. He didn't say, stop calling out to anybody. It's amazing because when he said, deliver yourself, he didn't even say right here, that I'm going to deliver you. He said what you need is already in you. So if you're in bondage now, it's because you chose it. Yes, wow, wow, wow. Hallelujah. Deliver yourself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. Look what he says, y'all, in verse number eight. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory, he has sent me Unto the nations. Now this is Zechariah speaking, y'all. He said, after the glory, he had sent me. Everybody say, the Lord is sending me. The Lord is, the sending, Lord me. is sending me. He said, he sent me to the nations 
which spoiled you. Like, in other words, everything that put you in a trap, every everything that caused you to be deceived, Zachariah says, I showed up to point it out to you and to show you how you got into bondage. So you can't say, I didn't know it was there. I didn't know how it got there. He says, after the glory, he sent me to the nations that spoiled you. Look what he said. Oh, look at what Zechariah says. The reason why Zechariah is speaking like a hunter right now, y'all. Look what he says. He says, for he that touched you, touched the apple of his eye. Do y'all see that? God says, you so special to me that if you can't wake yourself up, if you can't dust yourself off, I'm about to get one of my hunters. Go get him. Go get him. I don't feel like it. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Well, you don't feel like it? I got one on the way for you. Go get him. But well, wait a minute. This person is in jail. Can y'all imagine for Paul to get to a place where he said he didn't even complain about being in jail? He said because evidently there was an assignment in jail. <laughs> Isaiah said, the Lord said, who shall I send? Isaiah said, after you gave me this revelation, here I am, Lord. You can send me. Y'all, this means that you got to have on strength for clothes. This means all you got to have on the helmet of salvation. You got to have on the breastplate yeah. of righteousness. Amen. So when you start talking and into it, when you start mingling with people, even on social media, yo, you, you got to have strength on. Because if the devil can get you bond, get you in bondage from social media, God says, I can deliver somebody through social media. God is like, where's my hunters? Wake up and put on strength. Hallelujah. He said, for he sent me to the nations that spoiled you. He that touched you touched the apple of his eye. Yo, you were so special. You were chosen by God. Don't get so sidetracked by what you see other people doing. Begin to look within and say, God, what is it that you've given unto me? You, you, you said I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God says, in order for you to appreciate it, you got to deliver yourself. God said, I didn't put you around people that taught you my word. I didn't put you around people that challenged you concerning my word. Now I need you to do it for yourself. Because I need you to get to a place that once you understand that what's been, what's been sown as seed, you got to believe that it was planted. So now I need you to know what it feels like to expect what was planted, to start bearing, to expect what was planted, to start bearing fruit. Deliver yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I will deliver myself. Hallelujah. Because he, he says, y'all got to believe him. He says, I'm the apple of his eye. I got to believe that. Sometimes we might do things that we don't think that that's possible. But I didn't call myself. He right. called me. So I gotta, I sound like a tape recorder so much where I'm always saying the same thing to so many different people, talking about how he delivered me and how he changed me. Why do you keep saying it? Because I'm under authority. It's not about me doing what I wanna do. What he, what he needs you to do, he's already equipped you for it. And it's already in you. It's been tested like gold has been tested. It's been purified. Stop thinking that some worldly, worldly weapons is going to work for you. You a hunter from heaven. Hallelujah. You've been sitting here on assignment. I'm a hunter from heaven. I'm a hunter from heaven. Hallelujah. Wow. He that touched you. Touched the apple of his eye. 
And y'all, as we close out, drop down to verse number 13. Hallelujah. How do I get my freedom? How do I take the bands off of my neck? Boy, this, when I read this, I was like, oh my God. Listen to what he says in verse number 13. Be silent, O oh, all flesh. Everybody say, I command my flesh to be silent. I command my flesh to be silent. My flesh to be silent. God, when it comes down to the word of God, when it comes down to God speaking concerning my life, in order for me to be what God is calling me to be, my flesh got to shut up. Hallelujah. I got to take authority over my flesh. If I'm not taking authority over my flesh, what's going to happen with the fruit of the spirit? How much freedom am I going to have if my flesh is operating? Be silent, O oh, all flesh, before the Lord. So he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Hallelujah. Be silent, flesh. Sometimes, y'all, when we start acting out in our emotions, it's like for whatever reason, it's kind of hard to grasp the fact that the Lord is there. So if you refuse to adhere to the voice and the presence of the Lord, it means that you choose not to be in the presence of the Lord. Wow. <clears throat> Do we get this? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. So that means you have to command your flesh Jesus, man. to be quiet. That's why I said mortify, kill your flesh. Walk in the spirit. Don't, let, don't lust and walk in the flesh. Be silent, O flesh. All this flesh before the Lord. Praise the Lord. And while my flesh is silent, Guess what? My flesh can't help it when my spirit man is saying, what this is that's on my neck? What is this? Pride? Man, let me take this off. Right. What is this? This blasphemy? Cussing? Man, why am I being like everybody else? Let me take this off. He right. says, deliver yourself. God says, I've given you the pattern. I've shown you my word. He says, I've drawn you by loving kindness. He's so gentle. Jesus was so approachable, y'all. But if I have the mind of Christ, I need to be more like him. And y'all, we got to be sensitive because everybody's not at the same stage of the game. People are at different stages. And if you find it, y'all, you'll find yourself being upset that you're more spiritually mature because you can actually find yourself trying to be jealous of somebody who's immature. Oh my God. Mm. Because they walk in the flesh and now, oh my God, that's why you got to have a peace. Because without peace, you're like, well, maybe I could do it too. Mm. Maybe I can entertain it too. Let me show you how this feels. God said, nah, you need the peace of God. He said, wait a minute. I know, I know you woke up, but you didn't put on strength. He said, wait a minute. Are you walking up that mountain? Let me look at your feet. Man, your feet dusty. You ain't ready. You ain't ready for what you're walking into. He says, but how beautiful are the feet when I look? See your feet? Whoa. Whoa, oh, your feet, they dazzling. That means there's an anointed word in your mouth. That means you're not dusty. That means that you equipped, that you ready, that you a hunter. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all, let's all stand up together. Hallelujah. 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 So, Father, I just speak your word in this place right now, Lord Jesus. I speak to every hunter, every man of God, every woman of God to be healed tonight. Loose yourself. Deliver yourself. And I pray right now for every one of us that, that's in this room, everyone that's, that's, that's connected right now by Zoom, by Facebook, wherever you are. I speak right now that you would no longer be entangled 
nor distracted by what's around you. Wake up. Get up. Put strength on. Put on the beautiful garments. Loose yourself. Sometimes you feel like a, a deer that got caught in a trap, man. Man, when she looked at me the way she did and when she said what she said, I got hit like an arrow. God said, well, think about a deer that broke loose from a hunter. God says, deliver yourself. Deliver yourself. Don't allow nobody's misfortune or nobody's bondage to make you desire to be bound. Jesus. You a hunter. Hallelujah. So, Father, I bless you right now, Lord God, and I bless every person under the sound of my voice. I receive the freedom right now. Yes. Father, I will have my freedom now. Hallelujah. Father, I will have my freedom now. Come on, everybody, just say on your own. Just declare it. Father, Father I will have my freedom now. I will have my freedoms now.